Good morning, this is January the 29th, 2020, hearing for Executive Appointments Committee. I'm Councilman Robert Stokes, Chairman of the Committee. To my far left is the Vice Chair of this Committee, Councilman Burnett from the 8th District. Thank you, Mr. To his far left is Councilwoman Clark from the 14th District, member of the Committee. On my far right is um, our colleague, Councilman Eric Costello, who's here. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Also, I want to recognize um, Marguerite Curran here, who is the staff person for this committee. And from the mayor's office, Nina Thimlis. Today, we review the following um, nominations for the Civilian Review Board, Ms. Tiffany Wingate. The committee would like for you to state your name, tell us about your background and interest in the position, and share your vision for the board. After we have, you have finished, your presentation committee members may have a few questions for you. Please stay seated and use the microphone at the desk. Before you start, I'm sorry, Councilman Costello wanted to say something. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to comment, even though I'm not on this uh, specific committee. Uh, Tiffany is someone uh, who I've known since I first got on the council for about five years, uh, really a, a pillar in the Druid Heights community. Uh, and I think brings a uh, great deal of, of life and work experience uh, to the work of the Civilian Review Board. Uh, and I respectfully ask for the committee's uh, favorable consideration for appointment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Ms. Um, Tiffany Wingate, you can start. Good morning. Thank you all for having me. Um, this is really my first public speaking, so forgive me if I don't follow the path that he said. Um, I'm Tiffany Wingate. I was born and raised in Baltimore City. I was born and raised in the McCullough Homes development. Um, I am one of three children. My mother um, is everything. Um, she raised us as a single parent, um, instilling great values within us. Um, she always told me that where you are or where you start has no determination on where you'll end up. She is a woman of many talents. She's a chef by trade. She's a computer programmer by trade. She's an artist by trade. She's a seamstress by trade. Uh, she did all of this with a disability. Um, she's taught me to work hard for anything and everything that you believe in. I'm a mother of three children. I've raised my children in Baltimore City. I'm the youngest of her three children. Uh, two of my children are business owners. I am also a business owner. I have four grandchildren, so I'm invested in Baltimore City. Um, I've worked for the University of Maryland Medical Center for 20 years. I run a catering business. As I said, I'm a grandmother, I'm a mother. I'm supportive of my children. I'm supportive of my community. I went back to school last year for uh, a degree in information system management. At that time, uh, after my first semester, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. So for the past year, that's been my fight. Um, but I've always been a fighter, so it was just one other fight for me to fight. Uh, community is my strong is, is, is my strong sense. I am, like I said, invested in the city. I want to see the city come back to what it used to be when I was growing up in the city. I know things change and times change, but it's also said that there's nothing new under the sun. So where we were, we can be again. I know that that's gonna take hard work and dedication, not only from you all as the leaders of the city, but from us as citizens of the city. I believe that 
if we all agree to work on one accord, we can do whatever is necessary to get us to where we need to be, but we all, all have to be in agreement that that has to take place and come to a common ground as to how that can take place. Um, my position with the Civilian Review Board is more so about bringing understanding from two different places and bringing a common ground to those two different places. Uh, we all know what the police department means to mainly communities such as ours. They have that presence that makes us feel safe. Um, I still, I still love the police. I still believe in the police department. I still believe that there are common grounds between us and them, and we just have to be, like I said, in agreement that we can come to a understanding where we find that common ground and do what's necessary to, to make all parties comfortable in a life that we all have to live together. So with that being said, there are some things that we can do to help the police department and the police department can do to help the citizens and the civilian review board. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna be the bridge that brings us together instead of the one that divides us. Um, law enforcement is a, is a strong force in my family. I come from a military and a police background family. So I understand that it's difficult on, on both ends. Um, I just want us to be what we have the potential to be as a city and as people. And whatever my role in making that happen, I'm willing to do. I've always been willing to do. But it's just how do we get there? Um, like I said, I'm invested in this city. I have grandchildren. And someday my grandchildren will have grandchildren. I. I own my home in, in the area that I live in. My daughters are looking to buy homes. My son is looking to buy a home and I love the city. So, you know, whatever it takes, I plan to be around for a long time. So whatever it takes. I don't um, know if I covered everything, but if you all have questions, Sure, I'd just like to recognize a member of this committee, Councilman Cohen from the 1st District. Thanks, Any questions, Councilman? Um, one, thank you for your uh, service to the community and willingness to continue to step up. Um, it's definitely appreciated, uh, especially a willingness to serve on this board, which I, I find to be particularly important as it relates to rebuilding trust with the community and the police department, which ultimately benefits all of us if we are actually able to accomplish that. So it's a, it's a very big role, but also that accountability piece. Can you talk about um, your work at the Justice Police Accountability uh, Organization and sort of how that's sort of informed your perspective on policing as, uh, and, and your interest in this position on the Civilian Review Board? Say that again, can I speak on my work in? So it, it says you're at the National Institute of Justice, Police and Accountability, is that yeah. correct? No, okay. Oh right, you said University of Maryland. Okay, maybe it's a typo then. Uh, yeah, I was like looking through the resume, I didn't see it, but then on the cover sheet, it said that. Um, okay, Never mind. Uh, yeah, it does, yeah, typo. Um, but yeah, well I won't ask you about that work because <laughs> It's not what you do. I have a question. When we talk about relationships with the community and, and police in Baltimore, how would you, what would you do to, to help build some of those um, relationships and that trust? Because they got to be a process. So as a member of the Civilian Review Board, how would you navigate that? Well, one of the things that we do as a board is we hold meetings in the community. Um, so that would be part of bringing the people in the community together to meet with the officers. But I also think that on a daily basis, people should interact with one another and those officers that patrol the communities need to have better interaction with the people within the community. So 
Um, entertainment partly is my business, so I would try to host events that would bring people together in an environment outside of not necessarily being the policing of the community. I think that within the community, officers need to be able to interact with the people within the community, not only in an enforcement position, a social kind of event. So those are some things that not only as part of the board, I would suggest, but those are some things that I am looking to work on within our community for our community. Would you be willing and other members to, a lot of the community residents don't know what the consent decree is. Would you be willing to work with them? And when you come to the community, bring somebody so they can explain it because we need to community understand exactly what it is. There's a lot of confusion behind it, and there's a lot of people don't know what it does, what it means, what you can't do, what you can do. And being on a civilian review board, you're talking about trusting, building a relationship with the community. Would you be willing to bring somebody from consent decree to talk about that? And just you, have, you having that kind of relationship with that also? Yes, that is part of our responsibility as as the board to enforce that and to make certain that that information is presented to the communities. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I, Councilwoman I Clark, can you comment? Uh, you sound like the perfect person for the Civilian Review Board from your perspectives, which is um, we have to come together. And the Civilian Review Board um, has been through a very tough time here, but it looks like better days are coming. And um, you're exactly the right person to help, as you use the term bridge, bridge um, the Civilian Review Board itself into a, into a place where it's, it is acknowledged for its functions and for its um, authority to have the information it needs to conduct the very important work, which is the bridging work um, of, that you discuss. So you're perfect person. I, as, as you sound like a perfect person. You look like the perfect person. And Drew Heights is always a perfect launching ground. It was always, it always has been in my life anyway, very active, very neighbor oriented, very, hey, wait a minute. We'll, we'll explain to you what we're all going to do here. Um, I think you fit very well and do exactly the place we're in. Just keep the, help keep it strong and transparent and um, back up that authority because it's really singular in its uh, authority within city government. So thank you for being with Thank you, Councilwoman. Side. Councilman, um, you All I speak. just wanted to say to my friend and colleague from the 14th District, I told you so. <laughs> She's the perfect fit. I, uh, I wasn't object, I never I said obey. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. It's still early. Count, in the any other question? You have but any questions? He, uh, my colleague from the 11th district. He always. He always supports candidates such as yourself that he has come up with, and so you're right. He told me so, and I'm so <laughs> glad he was right for a change. <laughs> any other questions? Okay. There is no public testimony. We will be taking a vote. Is there a motion to recommend Tiffany Wingate? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Burnett. Second by Councilwoman Clark. Stokes has a yes. Councilman Burnett? Yes. Councilwoman Clark? Yes. Councilman Cohen? Yes. Uh, Councilman Schleifer is absent. The motion passed the committee. We recommend a favor report for Ms. Wingate. The nomination will be placed on second reader on Monday, February the 10th, 2020. The full council will review and take a vote. On behalf of the mayor and the city council of Baltimore, I'd like to thank you for your willingness to give your time and efforts to the citizens of Baltimore. If there's no other business, the committee is adjourned, and congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you.